going to be a problem champion for HK to deal with, and Red does play a phenomenal Renekton. Now we see Caitlyn and J4. J4 away from Phi. He was playing that one uh, yesterday and had a really strong showing. Mm. Caitlyn from Engad, that was one of the stable champions that he had for kiting, but then Engad played Lucian and got the quadra kill, yeah. and uh, that was a big highlight for him. And then the last two bands coming in, Vayne and Nidalee, so no 2-2-8 Nidalee and no God Quai uh, Vayne. Yeah, so Wind actually going against the treaty that they had originally banning out the mid lane Nidalee. But also, like you mentioned, last, uh, in the last series that uh, was HKA played, Lucian just, oh my goodness, that guy is a monster. So end god, going godlike in that series, and we'll have to see if he decides to pick up that Lucian once again. Uh, probably bigger a bigger deal was that Renekton ban. Yeah. Nobody's going to let Red play that champion ever again. Sadly, but Shivana let through the pick and ban phase, gonna be instantly locked in. We're gonna see most likely Red take that one to the top lane. He has an interesting playstyle. He'll possibly go for, it looks like, uh, hmm. might wanna put the climb back up, man. <laughs> he looks like he's gonna go for uh, the Spear Versace Blade of the Rune King slash Sunfire Bolt. Seems to be the staple build for him, but the side of HKA could go for the Annie Lucian lane, which what we've seen do tons of work for them, or they could look to pick up the jungle early on in that Vi, or just looking for the Lucian and leave up possibly an Annie support for the side of CGA. Yeah, now any support, Fiddlestick support, they're both going to be kind of top tier support picks here. At least that's what we've seen over the course of yeah. yesterday's games. Uh, with Fiddlesticks being banned, Annie right up there at the top. Uh, the, the only interesting thing that I've noticed is that usually you'll see both the uh, AD carry and support pick together, uh, unless you want to sort of save that Lucian or Ezreal pick for maybe a mid lane choice, which we have, we have actually seen a fair amount of here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. But there's the Annie, it's being hovered over. The only question is, without Annie, without Fiddlesticks, mm. what do you pick if you're Hong Kong Attitude? Uh, they could go for the Lulu support. She seems to be a pretty good answer to Annie. Got a lot of poke coming in with the Glitter Lance, some shields, but still, there's, there's some other options they could throw in there. I'm not gonna speculate just yet, but Annie coming in most likely for Sean and uh, Pacemite. Gonna maybe go for Ezreal for potentially 2 2 8 mid or for God Quai Bot. And for a long time, picking an Ezreal very early on was kind of ambiguous because you could run it as an AD carry or as a mid laner. Except for now, the same thing actually goes with Lucian. We've seen, uh, I think the very first mid lane Lucian was probably, rest in peace, the mid laner for <laughs> North American Complexity team. And then almost the next day, we saw it in OGN champions in Korea. So now that Lucian and Ezreal are kind of mid lane able champions, we've actually seen a couple of other AD carries move mid. Like uh, yesterday, I believe it was Tristana yep. we saw a couple of games mid um, for, Jay for yeah, Jay Young. So I don't know, it, it didn't really work out, but it didn't you know get smashed either. No. So could see mid lane 80 carries again, but uh, really looking forward to that top lane matchup. It's something that Red has just devastated several games in a row. Going up against the Hong Kong Attitudes win, will we see him lock in that Shen pick? I, Ooh, there it is, it's okay. locked in and against the Shivana. How do you think that's gonna go? Well, Shen has kind of teetered off. It's been mostly like Renekton and Shivana right. coming in 100% there. But Shen coming in, he has got some sustain. He's got potential for a 2v1 lane if he wants to do that one. But we're seeing the 100% wife steal lane in that bottom lane with Thresh Lucian once again. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see if they have the flays to uh, come in as yesterday's flays were phenomenal against that Tristana, stopping the rocket jump and just a yeah. ton of damage coming in as well as the CC. But Elise and Gragas being hovered over here. 2 to 8 can play that Gragas in the mid lane. And then mm -hmm. uh, jungle Elise is something that we see all the time. And uh, very common to come in. Repel, Cocoon, all the damage she can apply with the uh, percentage damage in her Qs from Spider and Human Form. But still got a couple seconds coming in for the rest of the picks. And uh, it looks like HK left out their mid pick. So they want to try to counter out CGA. Yeah, that's right. And I, I like that decision to leave that mid pick for last because Pasa has been such a huge part of Hong Kong Attitude's team. Not only winning 1v1 fights, but uh, like we said, his strength has been something that, especially in team fights, once the team groups up for either Dragon or turret objectives, he's either, as Gragas, been able to just ult the entire te enemy team away from the turret, and that oh, makes yeah. it a lot easier to take. Uh, but at least in this matchup, it's going to be a Ziggs locked in. Mm. So some, some extra wave clear additive Ziggs kit in the last 
this patch, we are still on 3.13. Yep. So no Targon's braces coming out <laughs> quite yet. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he's going to be playing Ziggs, uh, a champion that at least in Season 3 didn't get a whole lot of play at all. But right as the season's about to end, it's finally time for Ziggs. He's going to be going up against 228's Gragas. Yeah, someone we saw play Ziggs a lot early on was probably from mm -hmm. Complexity back when the MLG days. It was a long time ago. But uh, Gragas, he can try to sustain through. A lot of poke comes in from those bouncing bombs. He's got the mines to zone away and the satchel charge to bounce himself away too if you want us to have some fun with that. But uh, the lane matchups and the jungle matchup is going to be very aggressive. I want to see early ganks. I want to see if there's going to be a lane swap potentially too from either side. Shen Shibata can do that fairly right. well, especially with some jungle uh, pressure coming in out of the jungle <laughs> from the junglers. But uh, still, these team comps looking really good. Early on though, I like Lucian Thresh, but Annie and Ezreal can poke out so hard. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think something definitely to watch out for is that top lane, who hits level six first, because Shivana without Dragon's Descent isn't going to have any tools to uh, to be able to stop Shen from ulting oh, away. Yeah. So if he hits six, ults out, Shivana's just going to have to kind of wave at him <laughs> and watch Goodbye, him Goodbye, Shen. <laughs> <laughs> but we are actually loading into the game. It's game one in the first best of three of the day. It's the grand finals of the amateur tournament here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. So it's been a while. I've been waiting, anticipating this, uh, this moment. We're about to get the game underway as the players load on in. It's Cyber Games Arena Legends taking on Hong Kong Attitude. And both teams that are primarily from Hong Kong, uh, I believe there's one player from Macau on uh, Cyber Games Arena Legends. But it's just nice to see so much of Southeast Asia just being represented here today. And here we go out onto the rift with our first game in this grand final wow. best of three. So perhaps starting off with six green wards, so giving up some of the extra sustain he could have gotten, some of the mana pot, he, uh, so one of the mana potions he could have picked up as well. So just looking for a ton of early map pressure with those wards and potentially going to drop a, red, a ward at his red and then look to roam and join his team at the opposing red and could potentially see a steal come out as uh, these... these uh, these C teams seem to uh, like to favor going for red steals and counteracting the uh, other junglers on the respective other team. <laughs> All right, first damage done there to Passa. Throws out a bouncing bomb or a water balloon, depending water balloon. on what skin you're using. There's going to be the first ward, perhaps, perhaps going to throw it down there. No kill on that ward. That's one of the dangerous things about warding right in front of a Shivana, because if you do skill up Twin Bite very early on, you can auto attack and then get the two attacks afterwards and take out that ward. So not wanting to reveal what skill he's going for. Red didn't kill the ward off, knows it's there. We're going to see how things start out for level ones without actually a lot of ward coverage going out. So with all those green wards, I would have expected to see a lot more of them out. Only two so mm. far. Looking for another one on a deep red buff invade. Yeah, and Engod did get spotted out there by Shaw, but Shaw needed a piercing light to the face and a couple auto attacks. We do have a lot of group around the opposing red buff here. Five members going to be grouping up from both teams. But Hasa looking to go back to base and uh, potentially run back to his lane. The Spiderling's going to chase him down. They're going to get out of there. And this is looking to be potentially a safe start for both sides as HK Faye will grab up his blue buff and red buff will be thrown over to uh, Peace Might. Yeah, something else to notice, there's no actual ward on the red buff. So mm. while there's a ward at the entrance to that area, it, it, Hong Kong Attitude won't know exactly what to expect for right now. Peace Might is going to be taking that one out. Red is down here, not revealing his positioning just yet. You can see he's staying out of lane and will actually be jungling for the first little bit of the game with Peace Might there for Cyber Games Arena Legends. And I really like that choice because when you go into a 2v1, you get denied really, really heavily early on. And so you don't want to be denied quite that much. It does look like we are going to see a 1v1 bottom with the duo lanes up hmm. top. So a nice uh, either guess or nice map vision giving uh, Cyber Games Arena Legends the uh, the ability to switch up Ooh. their lanes as well. Stun comes out there. A lot of damage traded on to perhaps very aggressively positioning up there in the duo. Meanwhile, something else to talk about. It's going to be the mid lane as well. A very, very high harass lane for Pasa. You can see him just getting up that uh, shortened fuse, harassing down Oh two, man, two, up eight. top though, God Kawhi has been hit for a ton of damage. That Flay passive coming in from Thresh, they're doing a ton of damage, and God trying to hit him with Piercing Lights. There's another one right there, gonna chunk away a little bit of his HP. It's gonna force some pressure. He's gonna use the uh, Relentless Pursuit to come in as well as perhaps not being level two just yet, so no deaths, and it's gonna force them back, and this is not looking like a good position for CGA, and this could force some early pressure from Peacemite or an early back, which would put them at a huge disadvantage. Yeah, Sean is actually almost halfway Ooh. away from being level two. God Kawhi as well, just now hitting that mark, but even still, that's going to be a big disadvantage. And something that Lucian Thresh does very well, he can push very hard early on, especially with that piercing light, get up a lot of harass down there. 
So Hong Kong Attitude off to a very strong top lane pressure. You did see a little bit of uh, pressure around that middle lane. Peace Might getting in there, not able to do anything to pass it just yet. Junglers have been juggling primarily for the majority of this early game, so no pressure just yet. But top lane, Kawhi has been able to live steal just a little bit. Sean finally level two as well, so I probably should be seeing a very passive early start to the game, and we haven't even talked about bottom lane yeah. yet because it's, it's a, gonna it's be a the shame island. Lane. It's gonna be the lonely island down there, so they're just gonna be farming back up. No, no jungle ganks to possibly level six. Then they'll have to repel in and look for uh, cocoon, and uh, same for Faye. He could look for the assault and battery into wallbreaker combination. But still, the, the the most of the action has been going on in this top lane. The poke is just coming in nonstop from and God that piercing light, and then even the flay auto attacks from perhaps just waiting for it to fully stack up and they're just abusing Annie as well as abusing Ezreal. You see the right there, the piercing light goes through the minions. It farm He farms it up perfectly fine with the Gunslinger passive. And now we're going to see a stun underneath the turret. There's going to be a ton of damage coming from Mystic Shot. Flash Repel comes in. Ignite is going to get dropped out. Oh, Cocoon Cocoon. Connects. The Dark Pass is going to drag him out, but the Fireball doesn't connect. It's going to be first blood to Peace Might. Can they chase down perhaps here? Incinerate connects out the auto attacks and the red buff for the slow. God Kawhi is going to come in. Cocoon is going to get flash away. Death sentence and turns away as they give up the chase and get the one kill and CGA gonna get that first blood. And there you go, a nice cocoon landed and even that, that gank lasted long enough for the second cocoon to come off cooldown and force another smite out there out of perhaps. So nice gank in there, kill. Summoner's blown a big advantage already to Cyber Games Arena Legend. Yeah, and that first blood gold going over to Elise in the jungle nets him the mo mobility boots, so he'll be able to roam around and get in there for the cocoons much faster. While down bot, you see that just the trades coming in, wind being forced out of the lane there just a little bit, just having to use that shadow dash and uh, keep himself safe. And so at least for right now, we're finally going to see perhaps head back to base. End God coming in, and it's interesting to see the way that this game sort of fluctuates. End God and perhaps actually had a very dominant early game, but they played so aggressively for so long that eventually uh, Peace Might made his way up there, wound up getting first blood for CGAL. So Hong Kong Attitude, they may be down a little bit early on, but keep in mind, it's not about the first five, six, seven yeah. minutes of the game. We're still seeing a very extended laning phase, but in the mid lane, a lot of focus here. Uh, Fi waiting in the wings, <laughs> sees Sean. Sean not gonna face check just yet, but walks around Ooh. there. He actually missed the Vault Breaker there. Sean is going to be able to turn around and stun. He does not have Flash available. There's going to be Initiation on Apostle, though. He's going to try to Sasso charge his way out. He's ignited, <laughs> but falls in the air as 228 is going to be the target for Fi. He cannot 3v1 at this point. He'll get bursted out and forced to run away. Perhaps he's coming in from the side, though. He's going to look for a Death Sentence. It looks like he's just going to soak up some of the XP and farm up a little bit and help keep Fi safe. But another kill, the CGA, has a really well-coordinated gank from Peace Might. Yeah, absolutely, and that's going to be two kills over to Cyber Games Arena Legends. Bottom lane, it's actually going to be Taunt onto Red underneath the turret. Couple turret shots coming his way, so a nice trade off there. But uh, I got to say, these ganks really working out uh, in the North American scene, which is something I think we're both a little bit more familiar with. Yeah. Elise's pick and ban every single game. Over here, it seems like while it was a very high priority, Peace Might's really making it work. Death Sentence almost arcing shifted into, but nice dodge there by God Kwai. Very, very nice dodge from him. And also the ward coverage coming out from that top lane already is proving to be really useful. They have that Tribrush ward, they even have the edge towards the entrance of the river warded. Now we're seeing potentially a nice push onto this turret. They could try to get some damage, but Sean showing up on that Annie has a stun prepped and will keep God Kwai safe and farming and happy. Speaking of farm though, it's relatively close in this uh, 2v2 matchup up top, but in the middle late actually uh, Pasa showing a very dominating lead against 228. Yeah, he's up 15 CS here at seven minutes and while that's not a lot of CS it is a lot for this particular time in the game. You can see that netting him the one Doran's ring advantage. A lot of consum consumables there Ooh. for 228. Death sentence landing on the Sean top lane. Flay as well. Ooh, piercing light comes in. Gunslinger passes on the God Kawhi. They're trying to split up the aggro. There is the dark pass. Just to shield up a little bit of damage. Perhaps is kind of 2v1 at this point. Shed Ultimate comes in. He's level 6. He's going to get a double flay. Here comes the taunt. Sean is going to go down. That is going to be perhaps picking up the kill. And a nice uh, Dan United in from Wind will help him get an assist and some extra gold and even up the gold tally. As we do see in the opposing jungle right now, uh, Peace Might is potentially looking to uh, stop Faye from getting his blue or giving it off to... Oh, we're going to see a dive uh, under the turret. Top lane. Ignite goes down. There is the dive. Watch there is barrier in time. Do oh. not think, yeah, it's going to go down. And that's going to be a second kill there. Wind realizing he's not going to be able to make it down bottom fast enough. So goes for a second oh. kill. It's 
stolen away. Peace Might gets the blue steal, walks back out successfully. But at least for right now, you know, Red has been able to shove that bottom lane extremely hard. Should be able to get a lot of nice turret damage, but still, it's two kills fired right back. Hong Kong attitude evening up the score. Yeah, and with Peace Might taking out that blue buff uh, away from Pasta, he's going to have a rough time in that lane, and he will be able to give uh, 228 the blue buff that just spawned, unless he wants to take it for himself, which it looks like he's not going to take it for himself. He will just look to hand it on over and help him in the lane. There's going to be the uh, bomb coming in from Pasta to scatter it out, but not enough damage to seal away. The barrel will come through, and 228 will snag that one up. So nice blue buff to nine. There's going to be a ton underneath the turret. Red is going to eat a ton of damage from that one, but just be able to sustain up with that Vamp Sister and Doran's Blade as well as the Twin Fangs. We have Sean roaming around though right now. Could potentially look to come down to that bot lane, stacking up the stun, does have it ready. We do see Pasta rotating down bot as well. He's doing the Wolves, but Red is going to be successfully held off by Winds and just going to not see anything crazy go on just yet. So nice to see the lane rotating. Exactly, Sean and God Kwai coming bottom lane, who along with Red and probably Peace Might as well. Yeah, you can see oh. him heading right towards that dragon. It is going to come out there. Stun on a win. There's going to be Shadow Dash backwards. Oh, wow. Dragons to send on in. Come on, as they change, chase this one down, it looks like the burnout is not going to be enough for them to keep this one down. True Shot Barrage comes through. It does connect. Wind is going to be able to sustain through that one. That turret is almost dead, so they could get an, one more auto attack on that. But Peace Might is getting dangerously low from this dragon. The Spider Lane is going to take some hits for him, but up top, HKA going to push down the tier one and grab themselves the first turn of the game. But the first dragon of the game is going to go over to CGA, as it uh, looks like no one is going to look to contest this from the side of. Uh, um, Hong Kong Attitude. Now that's going to be first Dragon very early on, but I love the decision by Hong Kong Attitude to just trade that for the top turret. Dragons respawn, turrets do not, and that is going to be a turret taken down already. And keep in mind, it is at the cost of the bottom turret, yeah. so trading one for one in turrets, but still the Dragon, that will give, uh, it gives the global objective win over to Hong Kong Attitude, but if you check out the gold count, still slightly in Cyber Game Arena's favor. Yeah, and with uh, Cyber Game Arena having that dragon, that's going to put them ahead. Just a little bit of gold, they can try to spend that one up. We do see against his rage, uh, against his uh, Bills Rock Cutlass, excuse me. I'm like, I don't know why I said against his rage blade, but if Bills Rock Cutlass completed up, so it's going to be that Blade of the Ring King Shivana that we're uh, so used to seeing coming in with a lot of chase potential and the slow on top of that. And uh, still not picking up boots yet, so going to look to rush that item uh, particularly fast. And that's just because she's been in primarily a farm lane very early on and hopefully to remain in that. That allows you to build a lot of aggressive itemization while you don't have to team fight and then get your tank items in time for those big objectives. A lot of pushing into this middle lane, but just look at the Ziggs wave clear. Wow. Uh, CGA just can't even get near that turret and didn't have God Kawhi there to poke it down either. No, and he's got the tier and the Chalice of Harmony, so a ton of magic. Um, a ton of mana regeneration coming in from that, so he'll be able to spam for quite a long time and be happy. Up top, though, Red is trying to push it onto Wind here and uh, gonna, gonna just farm it up as in the mid lane. Still, that push is coming in from CGA. They want to try to snag another tier one turret and try to get themselves that little turret advantage. Still, just gonna be that island up top, and it uh, looks like they're gonna split up a little bit. They're gonna send Peace Might to go to the, to the bottom lane, and uh, God Kawhi is gonna follow up. All right, so it will be jungler versus AD carry, at least for the time being. Peace Might actually shouldn't show himself until perhaps and God quite oh, get wow. into position. Cocoon comes in, Spiderling comes across as well. The True Shot Barrage is going to be a shift in. The Mystic Shot doesn't connect, but the Repel over the wall. The Exhaust is going to delay the time. The Box connects, the Slow is coming out. The Taunt connects the with the Death Sentence, and the Culling from the side delayed a little bit of extra damage. That was really well coordinated by HKA. They kept their support alive and picked up that kill on Peace Might, and still up top. Faye is going to hold off Red as he's doing a ton of damage with that excessive force and the passive coming in. Going to chunk away a little bit of that armor. He's going to chase down with a Vault Breaker. Going to probably force out the Dragon's Descent. No, it doesn't look like he's going to, actually. It's going to be still the trade, and they're going to back off and just be on the merry way to continue to farm. <laughs> now we did see a uh, kill almost taken away by the culling in the bottom lane. But now Engod's actually going to move to that mid lane matchup with Sean and God Kwai. On bottom for a 2v1. That's actually going to mean that Engod's turning around. He's Up not going to go. Actually, Faze forced out the Dragon's Descent as well as the uh, Mega Inferno Death Bomb coming in from Pasa. So that's going to be down. He's going to hit the Dragon's Breath. He's tanking the turret. He's got the burnout active. He's going to flash forward, get the auto attack, and get the kill. And that is going to be a nice little dive as well as potentially a tier one turn in the uh, top lane. You're going to fall over to red and a really good 1v1 duel. And that just shows the strength of Shivana's Dragon's Descent because without any tank items, diving turrets, you know, before the 15. 16 minute mark probably isn't the best idea, but you get so many extra tank stats from that Shivana ultimate. Death is connecting the bot lane. A talk comes in as well as a two man play. That's going to be another kill going over to HKA and put a 
killing spree onto Wind on that Shen, and we haven't seen much of him, and he's doing a really good job on that champion. It's like you said, going into this game, Shen, a champion that's kind of fallen off with the strength of Renekton, Shivana, Olaf, all very, very strong Ooh. solo laners. Death sentence will miss. Body slam in there. 2 2 eight. Got the wow. explosive cast. It's going to knock both of them into the turret range. And actually, Engar's going to take one turret shot. Getting ignited. Body slam picks up the kill. 2 2 going to chase down onto perhaps now. Does not have flash. It looks like this is going to be uh, perhaps a kill over to CJ. And who are they going to give it to? It looks like they're going to give it to God Kawhi. Split up the kills. One to the mid laner. One to the AD carry. And potentially now a blue steal away. As it is not going to fall into the touch. The flash comes in from Peace by the cocoon connects on Apasa. Spiderling Neurotoxin comes in. He's going to drop the minefield. Trying to oh remake. Drops God. ignite. A ton of damage. There's the Infuse, and can he get the bouncing ball for the kill? It looks like no. Peace might will be able to get out of there, and Pasa almost able to pick up the kill as now actually Wind up top did force a runaway from Red as well as uses Flash to taunt and not connect. So they're going to disengage from that one, and uh, a really good roam from 2 to 8 into that bot lane. All right, so that's going to be two members CGA off the map for right now, and that. Gives, gives a big power play opportunity to HK. The only problem is they're coming back from base two, so probably not going to see anything just yet. But with Dragon coming up in about a minute and a half, and a lot of pink ward coverage of that area, Cyber Gamers, they took Dragon number one. We'll have to see if they can take number two as well. Yeah, spawning in a minute. We'll see. As Blazing Rinky has been completed by Red, so he is that 1v1 dueling monster. And we will see what they can do with that one as they do push down this mid lane with the four members of the side of uh, HKA. And it does look like Pasa in the mid lane. He's He's been able to just wave clear that out extremely, extremely well. So something to notice is that as he continues to do that, uh, it's, it's really a disallowing Cyber Games Arena Legends the opportunity to keep pushing up that lane. You can see they have four champions right there. They're trying to push it up, but it's just not actually doing anything. So will this be the push that they're looking for? Side lanes, not really that too eventful, but now it's up to that mid lane. Is this push going to work out? We even saw Explosive Cask. Uh, CGA, they want to be able to catch out somebody from behind the turret. They just haven't been able to get that lane pushing in just yet. Peace Fight's going to come behind the turret. End God's going to spot out. They have a pink ward there. They're looking to try to clear out that green ward in some safety. The five man, uh, four man push is coming in. The culling's going to be used to clear out the rest of the wave there. God fights a little bit of damage. See, keeps those uh, range minions safe. The barrels are coming in non stop from 228 right now. Red is still dueling wind up top there. Sunfire Cape helping him sustain the three kills as well, helping him get the Sunfire Cape really early on. We do see as uh, HK holding on to this tier one turn in the mid lane and uh, dropping more wards. Sean is winning in the side though, has the anti-sun ready, has Tibbers, and Flash is almost up in a couple more seconds, but Dragon is now currently live. Peace Might is going in with God Kawhi, and it looks like they might be able to snatch this one up for free. And there you go, two for two. Dragon's there. It's going to be Tibbers and the Cocoon landing on the five. Yeah, he'll be able to walk out, though. They'll disengage from that one. They just wanted the Dragon and nothing else. Now Red, though, getting some free auto attacks up in this top lane. The Taunt did not connect from Wind. There, he's going to pop the burnout, just chunk away a little bit of damage there with the Twin Fangs as well, and uh, just now with two dragons under the belt, CGA got a little bit of a nice gold lead. Mr. Tibber is going to make his way into the mid lane, fighting off and God and perhaps Tibbers, please. No, Tibbers not going to stay alive very long, but it's going to be three on one for the time being. Red buff will be get given over to Peace Might, so actually choosing to strengthen up their jungler instead of giving that away to God Kawhi. who has been kind of free farming down there in the bottom lane. Both AD carries, a lot of CS, but still very far behind the mid laners. And if you're talking about CS, you got to talk about Pasa. This guy is up at 160 CS at 17 minutes. Wow. Incredible farming there. And it just goes to show you the pressure that's been on mid. He's just been mid lane wave clearing over and over, like you just saw, taking Wraith Camp, taking Wolves over and over again. He's 40 C up on his lane opponent, but keep in mind, uh, 228 is 2 and 0 off of a nice roam bottom lane. Yeah, and those kills are going to help keep him in very well. And both of them now with Athena's and Holy Grails, the spam coming in from the mana regeneration, they're going to have the cooldown reduction is going to help him out quite a lot. Wind still farming up top, though. He has fallen that 40, uh, 5 CS behind. Peace might waiting in the bot lane for Engot to maybe overextend there. We do have perhaps heading down as well. We see Sean with an Oracles running around trying to clear out wards and uh, keep that dragon area clear. We do see Faye with the Assault and Battery available to himself. He has his own Oracles and is looking to control their blue side as they look to spot out some wars from Sean, but he hasn't made his way up there just yet. 
That's actually something we've seen here out of uh, Southeast Asian uh, teams that isn't really prevalent in a lot of other metas, especially on the 3.13 patch. Uh -oh. Jugglers don't usually get that early Oracle's bottom lane, though. Perhaps it's going to initiate it on here. The exhaust comes in as well as Timbers to pick up the kill on perhaps before Shen can even make his way in. Actually, the Dragon's Descent was popped to interrupt that one. The Culling coming in from Engon. Not going to get the pick up a kill. He's going to clear out the wave a little bit. Sean leading the charge. Has the stun ready. Faye is going to be able to use that Vault Breaker to get over the wall. And that is going to be the end of that fight. But they do pick off a nice kill on perhaps who was not expecting uh, three members to just jump on him right there from CGA. All right, so now Sean will be able to drop a ward here, but Faye right there to clear it out. Drops one in response. Oracle's there from Sean to secure that vision of the area. <laughs> Mid lane, it's just wave clear on wave clear. Basta is not going to let any minions get near that turret. It's keeping up with an incredible CS score. Now 193 in 18 and a half minutes. Yeah, Wind is being, uh, Wind is doing a good job of holding off Red up here, but he's going to sustain off those golems just fine. We're going to see them fight for that one as the golem will go over to Wind, so he wins that battle over Red. We do see Faye winning on the side, though. No Dragon's Ascent available, but will they chase this one down is the real question. He's going to use that Burnout kit out of there just fine, while the three members of CGA back off from Botlin and look to go mid, but that Ziggs is just not going to let them push Faye. Coming in as well, Red spots him out and uh, is going to look to chase this, oh, chase this one out. Perhaps gets caught out there by Cocoon as well as the True Shot Barrage. And Sean picks up another kill on that Annie, just showing the bloodthirstiness that is his support. And Ziggs tries to throw a little bit of a water balloon to help them out, but is not able to. And while the the uh, damage came out from God Kawhi, it was going to be a, even the Ziggs ultimate just ulting that wave. The middle lane cannon creep will come in there. Is there enough damage to take it out? Uh -oh. The answer is yes. Diving through the turret. Sean comes in explosive, casts all the damage. He flashes the wall. Resultless pursuit is not enough. He cannot pick up a kill either. Peace Mike picks it up with that venomous bite and a nice dive, nice coordination coming from CGA. And they will snag up another killer. Keep, they keep catching out members of HK. And the positioning from CGA is just so phenomenal. But they keep having to dive the turret, yeah. having to set up picks in the jungle because they just can't push these lanes. <laughs> it's been 2 1 for the last 10 minutes. Oh. Top lane wind will get taken out by Red, just diving through there. Catch him out in the jungle, and then oh, the, uh, the uh, attempt at Shadow Dashing away didn't really work as Red was able to counter that. Get a lot more damage down with Blade of the Ruined King first. It's a very aggressive build. You really need to get nice one-on-one -on -one kills, and that's exactly what Red has been doing. Coming into this game, we talked about what a dominant force he's been coming, or allowing CGA to come back against Detonation, and looks like he's back to his old shenanigans. Now 2-0-0. Zero zero. Yeah, and uh, we'll just see him keep on still pushing through. It's kind of kind of reminiscent of Golden's, how he would just sit in that lane with the Zac and just farm up a storm. <laughs> and then when he joins his team, they win the fight. And it was a uh, really good play from him. Unfortunately, they still lost. But we're going to see Engod now lane swap, try to stop Red from taking up this golem, which he cannot. Faye coming in with a red buff, going to decide not to use anything on that one. Descent is coming across in that uh, mid brush. Doesn't connect there as Sean will be able to use the anti range and oracles to clear out some more wards as uh, he's trying to establish control around this Baron pit now, but will be backing out as he's pretty scared of perhaps, and Faye. Faye, did he actually refresh that Oracle's there? Is that as the one he's still been using? Actually, it's the one he's still been using. <laughs> Peace might drops a very deep ward coverage, almost behind second tier bottom lane turret. Now, when he's there to defend the push in from God Kawhi, who does not have any ability power. It's a Trinity Force this time, so no more APS reels <laughs> in our games just yet. There's going to be a lot of pressure. Now bottom lane, as I'm, I'm pretty sure Cyber Games Arena has, has figured out they can't really push through Pasa. 230 CS of 21 minutes. He's farming way, way above average. And we're going to see this tier 1 turret finally go down, though, as Red will man up and tank it, as we do see a uh, Dark Passage to get Faye out of there. Doesn't want to get caught out. The Bouncing Bombs, the Ardent Blaze as well, coming out to poke. The Dragon spawning in 10 seconds. So with that, CJ are going to look to try to secure their third Dragon of the game, or HK might try to steal this one away, or can Test it. So for CGA, they've taken the first two dragons, looking to make that a perfect 3-4-3. Three, 3. 22 minutes in, they are in perfect position. They got a lot of ward coverage as well. And now for Hong Kong Attitude, you can't kill the lantern, Sean. <laughs> you really wanted to. He's like, how can they see without having a ward? But wasn't able to take it down. Not quite the same case for Peace Might, who will take down the third dragon of the game for Cyber Games Arena. Yeah, and that's going to let them a lot of gold. And at this point, having this much of a gold lead is 
proving to be really difficult to deal with because now 228 almost has a death cap. We're going to see, uh, I think, a last whisper for God Kawhi as his second item, as that seems to be the standard build with the Trinity Force first. Maybe a Bloodthirst, you never know. Could just sit on the pickaxe for a while, but we'll see. Five man group coming in from HKA now. They're feeling strong. They want to try to push this turret down. Faze is going to take up a little bit, but they'll back off as the barrels from Gragas are going to stop them from pushing. And Pasta's going to be like, well, is this what it feels like to not be able to push? <laughs> The problem for Hong Kong Attitude is that their plan, you could tell what it was, is, hey, we're going to be able to defend turrets, a lot of wave clear, a lot of individual lane strength. But the problem is that, uh, at least in that last turret that went down, Red just can walk up, tank the turret, and has enough damage from the rest of his team to be able to poke it out. So if your plan is wave clearing, but your opponents can just tank up the turrets against you, that's probably not going to work out. So for Hong Kong Attitude, they need to make sure that they have enough players at the objectives to defend them so that... Uh, Cyber Games Arena can't just walk up to the turret, tank it down, oh. take it out there. Red was waiting on the side, though. Paso is not going to go any further than that one. Just Satchel charges himself out of there. And uh, another Oracle is coming in from the side of HK. Perhaps has this one. He's looking to clear out any other vision that Sean has placed. Sean with another Oracle in his own inventory. So going to look to uh, establish some more control on the side of HK Jungle. We do see uh, not too much... Uh, not too much team fighting coming in from either side right now. They're just kind of looking for picks on the side of CGA, and HK are just looking to try to farm back into this game a little bit. Exactly. It's 24 minutes into the game, but it feels like about 35, yeah. just because <laughs> there's been so much uh, just aggregate wave clearing. Mid lane especially, as you can see, Pasa up to 263 CS wow. on Ziggs at the 24-minute mark. So that's, uh, that's going to be a lot of gold in his pocket. In fact, if you check the gold count, he's up at 8,000 gold. And while 210 CS may not be as impressive, it's almost a full thousand gold advantage for his lane opponent in 228. He also has a, almost a fully stacked Saracen, uh, Archangel Staff into Seraph's Embrace soon, so about 30 more mana for that one, and he'll have that one completed at 24 minutes. We do see Red still applying that pressure down. Bob, the culling was used to help clear out some of the wave there. A ton of damage applied to the turret, but they will back off. They're going to wait for the next wave, and this one could actually fall over very easily with the four members of CGA grouping. Wind has standing United available, but Red does have a Dragon's Descent. He's going to actually get ignited underneath the turret right there. He will, be, he will be able to back out. He will get the turret, though, for his team. And now a nice 7.5k gold lead down bot. Though the pressure is still being applied. Pasta, though, on that Ziggs. Able to wave through like a monster. Keep farming right on up. Arden Blaze, the Mines, the Satchel, Bouncing Bombs galore. They just can't push on Pasta. Uh, yeah, pushing against Hong Kong attitude. Nigh impossible, but can't count out a red because he top lane or mid lane now top lane as well he's just tanked up the turret long enough to be able to get enough damage to take it out now looking to take away a red puff as well he's really forcing a hong kong attitude drawing them away Ooh. from their lanes red buff will get taken away there by Faye, but it's holding battery on a red they're gonna chase this one now flash comes in from wind he doesn't have to shadows dash up just yet they're gonna flash away as well from the vault breaker the burnout gonna be able to get him out of their dragon's descent keeping him safe and now he will go back into the lane and just back, go back, go right on back to farming. 228 and the rest of Cyber Games Arena in the bottom jungle of, uh, of Hong Kong Attitude. When you take down the side turrets, there's only that secondary mid turret left alive. But for Cyber Games Arena, I don't feel like they should, you know, just push down the mid lane and try to take that out, just given the way the pass has been wave clearing. Something that's actually been working very well for CGA is pushing down the side lanes and just catching HK out of position, not allowing them to set up all the wave clear that has been so effective at keeping them in the game. Yeah, and uh, Pasta still with a huge amount of farm, still down at 0-1 though. Hasn't found a kill for himself, hasn't found a way to uh, get even near CJ to try to just abuse the bouncing bomb damage coming in. We're going to see a death sentence come bluntly across from perhaps as the ward did get killed. A nice pink ward control coming in from CGA with Sean just using the uh, massive amount of ward dropping ability that you have in 3.13, which uh, does disappear in 3.14. So we are going to look to see as he just keeps dropping pink wards and keeps applying that Baron pressure. Top lane is going to be Win versus 228. I don't think Win's really going to want that matchup. No. So heading back to base. Doesn't have anything yet to buy. True Shot Barrage catches on to Fei and Engad. We'll just push them back a little bit more. We're setting a message before he gets on back to base. Last Whisper Trinity Force, and now a, uh, I mm. guess it's the making of a Bloodthirster coming out could for be an Ezreal. Yeah, yeah, definitely it could be an Infinity Edge. We are at that stage of the game where you can pretty much build whatever you want. You don't necessarily need the Bloodthirster for laning. The only problem if you do go for a Bloodthirster now is how do you get that stacked up? And the answer is probably pretty easily with the way this game is going. Just a lot of wave clear on wave clear. Yeah. 
The only problem is that while Paz has been able to do a really good job at that, you can just see the gold continuing to come in there for CGA. One of the things uh, making that happen has not only been their ability to take down four extra turrets, but controlling the dragon objectives as well. Yeah, and a taunt underneath turret though for red nets him a little bit of damage from that uh, turret. But now the three-man Baron is being initiated here from CGA as they are going to look to take this one down as fast as possible. Solo body damage is huge. The barrel's coming in as well. Ezreal going to give everybody Essence Flux and help them take that one out perhaps. And Faye looking to come over right now. Ballbreaker is charged up and ready. Can they actually look to attempt to seal this Baron? It's going to go down and it will be peace by picking it up. But there is a... Uh, Lucian ultimate coming across, True Shot Barrage as well. The Shed ultimate is initiated onto the Fae, but it's not enough as CGL like Godquai will pick up the kill. A flash over the wall from Engod. He pops the barrier a little late there, trying to chase it on the Sean. Arden Blaze cannot pick it up while a flash is forced out in the mid lane. The flash over the wall from G uh, from 2 to 8. The barrel's not enough to get the kill, but Sean picks it up as now perhaps is going to look to be their target as the blue buff Greg is something you cannot run away from. But the box oh and the barrel God. are not enough as 2 to 8 says, You are not getting away. A stun on the Pasa. They chase it out. Then the Satchel Charge will bounce away a little bit, but the barrel coming out in the turn around from 2 to a will net himself a double kill and now a baron up cga looking to push down possibly an inhibitor turret or just a tier two four for zero and while it looked kind of bad for sean he was able to turn the kill right back around onto end god we talked about how huge his lucian has been for hong kong attitude before but in that fight just got completely turned around zero four on a champion that's been such a huge point of strength for hong kong attitude Ooh. Wait, he's gonna be caught out down. by the cocoon. There's the, the Venomous Bike coming in. They're chasing this one down. The explosive <laughs> cask for the kill from 228. Nets himself unstoppable. 5 and 0 oh and 4. The inhibitor does fall. A 14,000 gold lead for the side of CGA. Hong Kong Attitude have a lot of work to do to come back into this. Yeah, it's not just if you pick up the kill, it's how you do it. And 228 really sending a message there in style, taking out Wind, who, as the tankiest member of the team, I really feel shouldn't get be uh, you know getting blown up by a single rotation of combo there from 228. It was just incredibly strong. 5-0 and 4. Looking for a Void Staff next, and wow. if with all that magic resistance, you're still unable to uh, to prevent yourself from getting blown up by Gragas. Once he picks up that Void Staff that he now has in his inventory, he even picks up another measly large rod as well. Right. This is getting a little silly in that mid lane. 2-2-8, just an absolute monster. I wonder if he's going to go for DFG or for Zonia's Hourglass. <laughs> I, I feel like it's going to be Zonia's Hourglass that you just uh, do some of that. Uh, Barrel rolling into body slam and just turn gold in the middle of that one. But red still, that solo menace up top. 258 CS. And uh, Blade of the Ring King, Randowin's done. I might be going for a Sunfire Cape. He could just go for a GA and look to be an unstoppable killing force. And uh, just the sign of HK still trying to farm up and now trying to hold off these uh, empowered minions of the side lanes and then the super minion in the mid lane. Blue buff will be stolen away, probably given over there to 228. So I'm pretty sure how damage is smite at this point. If it were 2. Point, or 3.14, then it definitely would. Uh, Gragas checking the uh, the bush is not going to be overconfident and allow a bush of death to be set up just yet. But I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, CGA know exactly where HK are going to be for the next however long. And just going to be a base defense for them, all out of turrets have been taken down. And now it's CGA looking to push in on to the base. They have a 4-1 split push set up. Oh my goodness, wow. explosive cask over the wall. Hits Faye, but perhaps they can way below half hit points. Yeah, there's going to be Assault and Battery, though, initiating onto Ezreal. But they cannot get it as 2-2-A's damage is just phenomenal coming in. Picking up the kill, perhaps it's going to try to run away, but the Ziggs Bomb sniping off Sean. The barrel coming in from 2-2-A picks up the kill as perhaps falls to, uh, <laughs> as it sees Red just diving in the back, picking up a killing spree, taking down perhaps. The inhibitor turret falls. The inhibitor is most likely to follow, but can they pick up Peace Might is the question. A Body Slam will keep him alive as well as a Flash. He's sitting in the back. God Quag goes at a killing spree, picks up the kill on Pasa. That's going to be an ace as well as now 228 sniping up the last kill on Wind. And this is looking like it's going to be game one for CGA over Hong Kong Attitude. Well, yeah, raising their champ dots there at the very end. As CGA will pick up game number one in this grand final best of three for the amateur tournament here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. Yeah, that was a really impressive showing. And these teams have gone back and forth on all the like we said before. And CGA just coming out stronger this time. Yeah, you can see a big smile on 228's <laughs> face. He knows he did a fair modicum of damage during that game. So really, really impressive. Nice to see them actually winning the first game that they play against their new opponents here in Hong Kong Attitude, a team that actually felt had a little bit of an advantage coming into this yeah. best of three. CGA, man, you just cannot count those guys out. Yeah, we'll see if Hong Kong Attitude uh, learn from this one, coming into the second game looking strong. Their team comp was looking really good, but the Shivana 
Split push coming in from Red. He's a split pushing monster. He apparently just loves to be on that island and like 1v1 me. Try to 1v1 me and see if you can take me down, especially with Shivana showing that Shen a thing or two. And then, yeah, it didn't really work out too well.